Hello everyone, this is Alex USA Days, and we're continuing with Learn Quality Assurance from Scratch playlist. So today we're going to talk about managing test cases and QA documentation. Uh, we're right now at module 5. So after that we will have uh, module 6 with basic console commands and then git introduction, slowly getting into more complex stuff, but we're almost done with the theory, okay? So um, what are checklists and what are test cases? Those are pretty much two main ways of how to run tests, how to structureize your test and create your tests properly. I would say checklist is very, more, is more high level, uh, but also it's pretty efficient way of uh, running uh, coverage and making sure that your application works as expected. Um, so essentially, checklist is a high-level test document. Checklist should include a modularized list of expected verifications. Test list should include what needs to be tested, expected outcomes, uh, results of verification, and checklist can be composed out of end-to-end -end flows for specific features. So, for example, if you're trying to uh, verify if your application still works after an update. You can create a checklist that go through main functionality like end-to-end. -end. So let's say you're uh, working on some web page that is e-commerce and you can shop online. So you'll create a flow where you log in, uh, you do search for certain items, maybe in different categories, you add them to cart, then you uh, select payment method, address for delivery and check out and get a confirmation email. So, and you'll have like multiple flows where you verify that functionality that has to be there is still there and works as expected. So um, a little bit more detailed than checklist is a test case, right? So test case is a set of steps to verify correct functionality of an application. It may have preconditions, test data, test case ID, test case description, test steps, expected results, uh, pass, fail, and visual examples, right? So um, test cases are more detailed. So essentially it's instructions on how to execute something step by step uh, with description of what results you want to get as, as a whole action goes through, what should be the end goal, what you should see by the end of execution of the test case, right? Uh, it is helpful to start working on feature verification by creating checklists first around core features or modules and then expanding this checklist to test cases. So you can create a checklist when you start working on an application if there's no test documentation. Talk to a product manager saying, hey, let's talk about the core functionalities and modules. Let's create checklists what we should look for, like what should be verified. And once you have the checklist, you can start working on expanding this checklist and filling it with test cases. Uh, and you can track test cases and manage them in test matrix. So I'm going to give you an example of a test matrix right now. Uh, so here's an example of test matrix that I created at some point. So you can use this uh, to create your own, uh, follow the example. Essentially, there is a high level uh, for this test matrix where you have number of test cases executed, um, the date they were executed, pass, fail, some comments, overall just general high level upon all execution, right? Um, you will also can add some KPIs here. So how many tests were covered, how many tests are automated, how, how many tests are failed. Uh, you can figure out what kind of metrics you want to track uh, if you want to. Then there's a master spreadsheet and within master spreadsheet, you will have all the test cases that you will be running through uh, and you can update the master spreadsheet and then copy paste it with a new date and run it uh, maybe for a new sprint or however you want to run it, right? So here, for example, we have a test link and uh, there's a, there's this for main section. So here's our module right here, main section. Then there is uh, what test gates title, what we're doing here. So we're recording uh, and trying to upload an invalid file, right? So there's test case ID, priority for this test case. So P0 is the highest priority. Uh, then uh, here's a test description. So verify invalid audio file upload failed was error message. 
Um, then there's steps to reproduce. So we open the audio block, we select uh, upload the audio file, and then we upload a valid test data file. There is some test data which is attached uh, in a separate uh, tab here, which is an invalid uh, audio file. And the expected result for this test case, it should show, uh, should throw error message. Please choose valid file type, right? Time for execution is around three minutes manually. So you can kind of start collecting data, how long it's going to take you to run the whole end to end uh, regression spreadsheet, right? Or overall, just any set of test metrics and set of test cases, how it's going to take to execute and what can be and should be automated, right? Status and then story test link, some comments. So this is my layout. You can edit it, you can update it, you can create your own based on this. Uh, and then here is a, an example where the master spreadsheet was copied and this was actually run uh, like yesterday, right? Uh, so the same thing here, everything the uh, same except uh, there is status with a bug. So it's red, it means it failed. There's a bug ID straight away that's going to take you to Jira. And uh, some comments saying that invalid file was uploaded and there was no error message displayed so the system should have recognized this file that you're trying to upload is actually not an audio file uh, some other file it should have thrown an error but it never did this and here's some test data so you can have a link where this valid file is stored uh, test case id associated with this uh, test data so this is one of the like easiest and uh, efficient ways of managing test cases for free. You just create a spreadsheet and start creating matrix, right? Adding test cases to a master spreadsheet, copying it, and then running on specific uh, dates or whenever the execution needs to happen, filling out what is passed, failed, opening uh, bugs if needed, right? After you have tests, uh, have a checklist or you created a test case and put them in test matrix, you have to have some other place where you can manage documentation, right? Where you're going to link to them, where you're going to store all the relevant information. Um, and for managing test documentation, normally you will have some sort of uh, documentation space. So it could be Confluence if you're working in Jira. It's very popular or any other team documentation tool. Uh, so usually QA will have its own space, right? Where QA engineers will store test plans, information for new QA engineers on how to get started, bug templates, a bug life cycle, diagrams on test flow, and list of tools used. One of the popular tools is Confluence, but it can be anything even shared QA Google Drive. So it can be just a folder with set of files. Every place is different how they manage things. So it's, it's going to vary greatly from place to place. But I do recommend having some knowledge base uh, where you can go and figure out things and put some references on where to go to find things and so on. So it's going to be helpful for seasoned queue engineers because if something gets forgotten, there's a quick reference for that. And it's going to be helpful for new hires, new career engineers, because they always will have a place where they can go and read upon before they start asking questions or Googling for answers. Okay. Uh, and uh, at some point, your company even might spend some money or you maybe already have that, but you'll have some sort of a test management tool aside of a test matrix, right? So that could be test rail, test lodge, or any other test management tool. So instead of test matrices, companies might have dedicated test management tools uh, where queue engineers can add test cases, create test runs, and link them to specific stories in Jira or in other project management tools. Test lodge, uh, or you can check out and download for free also test rail. They're pretty similar. I'm just going to show you test lodge uh, but the idea is the same with test rail and test lodge so you have a project that you create right let's take a look what i have here uh, so i have uh, i am a member of one project i just created today test project okay so within this test project we have some overview some test plans some requirements test suits and test runs and so on so go into test plan section you can add a new test plan here, and I just added one, and I named it test all things, right? This test plan can be specific on what data you're trying to test, what you will be verifying, 
um, what kind of parts of application or is it specific functionality you're testing here so let's go into the test plan now under the test plan we have some suggestions that can go into the test plan like introduction test items features to be tested features not to be tested approach uh, pass fail criteria suspension criteria test deliverables test and task environmental needs all of those um, uh, points they were added automatically so i didn't add any of that it just suggests you how you can structure your test plan efficiently uh, now within the test plan we have associated test suites so we can view the test suites um, and i just created the test suite called verify login before we actually go there let's take a look there's also requirements and then i create a requirement document and i just named it all things have to pass but within the requirements there are going to be more specifications uh how things should be executed right what are the acceptance criteria um and this is linked to the requirements itself actually not linked to anything so there's really no requirements i didn't add anything so but there is a place for storing them here in test management system and then there are test suits and test suits uh, so this test plan is actually associated with a test suit and within test suite, you will have a set of test cases that you're going to run. So I just created two test cases. Uh, simple example with login, but let's take a look. So called verified login, this test suite is called. And I have two test cases here. So you see the ID automatically assigned, test case 01, test case 02. So one test case is valid username and password. And here's our test case. So first step, we go to this uh, page open it up following through steps okay so we're on the page then step to enter tom smith for the username here's username we enter tom smith then enter super secret password for the password so we enter password here and then uh step four click login we click login and we should see this secure area message um and expect the results should take user to this page so dot com secure and we're here Okay, you can add screenshots, what actually is expected outcome. You can add more details and what you want to see here. So, uh, but that's our test case one, right? Then there's a test case two and the invalid login. So essentially we go in through the same uh, steps, but instead of valid password, uh, we actually provide invalid for the password. So put an invalid login and we should see your password is invalid expected result your password is invalid error message should be displayed okay perfect uh so now we have those test suits under the test plan and then test runs so you can start new test run uh let's add test test run two so test all things test plan selected okay let's add some uh test cases so we're going to add this test suite both test cases are added close it okay uh and all right let's add it so we have two test cases that are not we're not run yet so let's uh let's start it run all tests so let's say test case one passes and you can attach test pass you can attach screenshots confirming it actually passed you can mark it that it passed and okay so this was test case one and then test case two test case failed right and you can attach a, a video or fail screenshot whatever well of the test case actually failing and then based on the failed test case um you can link this with uh, automatically with a story associated with uh, this test case or create a bug in Jira and then associate it with this run and saying it's failed. Okay, so, and the this is pretty much like a high level or not high level, like a more complex way of managing test cases that allows you to create task plans, uh, add uh, test cases, rerun them on demand, mark what's pass and fail, add logs. And this is essentially your proof uh, of execution, right? So if there are any questions, was 
everything executed properly, where why issue were not found, or how many issues were found, you can refer to this and share the data on what was executed, what passed, and what failed. Okay. So yeah, uh, this is in a nutshell uh, what we have here on managing test cases and QA documentation. So hopefully this was uh, helpful. Uh, check out the playlist for more videos uh, on the topic on how to become QA engineer. This was Alex USA Days. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.